Hello, my name is Lars Martinson, and I'm an American cartoonist. Although my name is so Scandinavian that it borders on parody, the foreign country that I have the strongest affinity with is not Norway or Sweden, but Japan. I've lived there on four separate occasions totaling more than a decade. The majority of that time was spent teaching English to Japanese school children, which was without question the most rewarding day job I've ever had. I spent a couple of years studying East Asian calligraphy at Shikoku University, which improved my comics line work immensely. And the majority of my cartooning career was devoted to a three-volume graphic novel entitled Tonoharu that takes place in Japan and which includes thousands of meticulous illustrations depicting the country. So I can speak from personal experience about just how enriching international exchange can be. And it is in this spirit that I'd like to discuss how these two art forms, which developed on opposite sides of the globe, could similarly benefit from a bit of cross-pollination. But before we really get into it, I've talked to a lot of people who aren't even familiar with the term visual novel, much less what they're all about. So just to make sure we're all on the same page, let me start off with a quick introduction. Visual novels are a storytelling medium that combines still images with text. In that sense, they are similar to comics, but unlike comics, which have their roots in print, visual novels are exclusively digital. Correspondingly, they borrow more heavily from video games than comics in terms of presentation. Like video games, visual novels almost always have a landscape orientation to match the aspect ratio of computer screens, in contrast to the portrait layout typical to print comics. Visual novels use dialogue boxes, usually at the bottom of the screen, to represent speech and provide narration, with the reader pressing a button or clicking the mouse to advance the text. This is in contrast to word balloons and captions typically found at the top of panels in comics. And finally, visual novels incorporate elements that traditional print comics cannot. Things like sound, music, voice acting, choose-your-own-adventure-style branching narrative paths, and animation. And yet, Despite this wealth of unique artistic tools to work with, visual novels tend to conform to a fairly narrow aesthetic which is emblematic of their country of origin. From the backgrounds, to the character designs, to the voice acting, Can I speak Japanese? all of these elements would be very much at home in an anime. Another common design choice is the heavy use of first-person perspective. Readers typically view the world through the main character's eyes, with supporting characters popping in and out of view whenever they speak. Many visual novels commit to the first-person conceit so wholly that we never even see what the main character looks like. In addition to not being seen, it's also fairly common for the protagonist not to be heard either. Oftentimes they are the only character that isn't voice acted, with their speech being represented exclusively as text. <laughs> This was originally probably due to disk space limitations, but even now it's still quite common to help the readers put themselves in the main character's shoes, I suppose. For subject matter, visual novels often have a heavy focus on romance, with the protagonist slash reader avatar selecting a mate from a gang of quirky love interests that surround him or her. When visual novels include branching narrative paths, the various routes are often named after whichever girl or guy the main character is pursuing. So you could have the Yuriko route, or the Midori route, or the Count Wellington route, or whatever. Okay, so I made a lot of sweeping generalizations here, so I want to make it clear that I'm not saying that all visual novels conform to these tropes, nor am I saying it's necessarily bad when they do. But I think that it's fair to say that as an art form, visual novels are ripe for diversification and it is in this area they could take a page from indie comics. There's actually a fairly tidy parallel here. Comic books were invented in the West, and it was a boon for the art form when artists in the East, particularly from Japan, put their own spin on the medium. I suspect that visual novels could similarly benefit from international influence, albeit in this case, from influence flowing in the other direction. Indie comics, despite inhabiting a fairly small niche, are a surprisingly vibrant and diverse medium. Art styles run the gamut from cute to grotesque, from realistic to heavily stylized. Subject matter and genre are similarly diverse, ranging from action to comedy to drama to investigative journalism to confessional autobiography to surrealism to educational to… well, you get the idea. Visual novels, in comparison, yeah. <laughs> 
a lot more homogenous, both in terms of style and subject matter. More diverse offerings would make for a much richer art form, and I think visual novel developers could do worse than look to indie comics for inspiration in this regard. But like I said at the beginning of the video, indie cartoonists could learn a thing or two from visual novels as well, particularly those who are interested in releasing their work digitally. Broadly speaking, there are two main categories of digital cartooning. Digital comics, which have multiple pages and are often released as PDFs, and webcomics, which are usually just a few panels long and are released as an image file on a website. But in either case, they are almost identical to print comics in terms of presentation. In fact, many digital comics were first released in print, and many webcomics are eventually collected into physical books, and I don't think much is lost in the change of format. The only major advantage that digital and webcomics derive from their digital format is the ease of distribution. And don't get me wrong, that's great, but if you're looking for an art form that takes advantage of digital's unique artistic potential, you'd be much better served by visual novels. Now, you might argue that adding in all the bells and whistles that visual novels employ could cause a project scope to balloon, rendering it too time-consuming to be viable. And I'll admit that risk exists. But I can also envision a scenario in which you could finish a visual novel much, much more quickly than a comic of similar length. This could be particularly valuable for independent cartoonists, for whom crazy long production times are the norm. You often hear stories about books being finished in a month, or screenplays being finished in just a week, but you almost never hear stories like that about graphic novels. The time it takes to finish a book-length comic is all too often measured not in days or weeks or months, but in years. Chris Ware devoted seven years to his seminal Jimmy Corrigan graphic novel, Charles Burns spent a decade on his book Black Hole. And perhaps the most influential graphic novel of all time, Art Spiegelman's two-volume Mouse, was created over the course of 11 years. And then there's my own graphic novel trilogy, Tono Haru. I spent 13 years on this damn thing. More than half of my adult life to create three volumes with a combined page count of less than 500 pages. I devoted a whole other video to Tono Haru's drawn-out development, so I won't dwell too much on it here, and I'll admit these are all extreme examples. But no matter how you slice it, comic creation is a huge time sink. And without question, the most significant contributor to these lengthy development times is not the writing, but the artwork. I mean, that makes sense, right? Writing the words, scene, train station, takes a couple of seconds. I mean, there, I just wrote it in the time it took me to talk about it. But actually drawing a train station? That can take days. And comics are made up of hundreds, if not thousands, of panels. Creating all that artwork, especially if you're working by yourself as many indie cartoonists do, can take, well, more than a decade in some cases. If a graphic novelist were able to tell the same story with less artwork, they could finish it much, much more quickly. And when it comes to getting the most bang for your buck out of a limited amount of artwork, visual novels are pretty hard to beat. For background images, they often have just one per location. So you might have the main character wake up and use a bedroom background. Then you'd use another image for the walk to school. When he gets to school, you'd show a classroom background. And then that night before he goes to sleep, you'd show the bedroom image again. In this example, we managed to show an entire day using just three background images. And that's not the end of it. If the main character returns to school throughout the week, you just reuse those images again and again. In contrast, most cartoonists redraw the backgrounds in every panel that they appear. Personally, I reused backgrounds for certain scenes in Tonoharu, but most of the time I used a background once and once only, requiring me to create hundreds upon hundreds of illustrations. Visual novels image recycling carries over into the foreground as well. Whenever a character talks, they fade in over the background. Each character usually has about half a dozen variations to show different emotional states, but that's it. For the rest of the story, even if it spans dozens of hours, whenever a character pops on screen to say something, you just choose the most appropriate emotion from that pool. For comics, you could easily draw the same character more than six times on a single page. Over the course of a book, a main character might be redrawn hundreds or thousands of times. To be fair, visual novels usually do have some images that are only used once to punctuate particularly important scenes, and visual novel illustrations are usually much more detailed than those found in a typical graphic novel. But even still, 
One could conceivably create a visual novel with less than 1% the number of illustrations it would take to create a comic of similar length. And personally, as someone who has spent more than a decade illustrating the same story and who never wants to get stuck on a project that long ever again, the potential time savings is pretty enticing. Enticing enough that I've decided I'd like to give it a try. As you can probably guess from the overall thrust of this video, I'm envisioning something that embodies the old saw, East meets West. From the East, I'd like to borrow the basic framework that Japanese visual novels employ. The elegant and economical way they combine video game interface with still images, sound, and text to tell their stories. But when it comes to the actual writing style, the characterization, and the aesthetics, I'm envisioning something that leans more heavily on Western influences. Something that looks and feels less like an anime and more like an American indie comic. To echo a sentiment from my last video, I aspire to finish future artistic projects in a matter of months, rather than a matter of years, while maintaining an acceptable level of quality. And I think that a visual novel indie comic hybrid might be a way to make that happen. By cherry picking the best qualities from these two mediums, I think that one could tell engaging, relatively ambitious audiovisual stories while keeping the scope and budget manageable. But you know what? Talk is cheap. So I went ahead and made a short test project to serve as a proof of concept. The title is The Grandfather Paradox, and it's the equivalent of a short story taking around an hour to read through. Drawing from my desire to incorporate Western influences, the style was inspired by the Belgian cartoonist Hergé, most famous for his comic Tintin. I also drew inspiration from silent film intertitles for the way I present text, and for the circular frames that pop up throughout the story. For the tone, I was going for a film noir Twilight Zone vibe with a story that begins with the main character being summoned to a hotel room by a friend, only to be met by a complete stranger. This is my first attempt at something like this, so it's a bit rough around the edges. The technical issues in particular have convinced me I need to collaborate with a programmer if I want to do anything more ambitious, but I think it is, in the very least, a promising start. But I encourage you to judge for yourselves. I've gone ahead and uploaded a video of the Grandfather Paradox from beginning to end. You can find a link to that in the description. So watch the first five minutes if you just want to get a sense of it, or watch the entire thing if it grabs your attention, whatever you prefer. And if you have a second to let me know what you think, I'd love to get some outside perspectives. Does the Grandfather Paradox make a convincing case for indie comic visual novel mashups, or does it leave you cold? In what areas could it be improved? I plan on making at least one more of these, so any feedback you might have would be most helpful. If I'm right about how quickly I can finish these, I should be back in a few months with a follow-up to the Grandfather Paradox. Uh, you know, knock on wood and all that. But in any event, thank you very much for watching.